Infiltrating our lines of defense to inflict damage upon our bases is not an easy task. If the enemy is lucky enough to get through, they'll have little time to identify critical targets and discharge their weapons. What can we do to reduce their chances of having a successful mission? We can apply camouflage, concealment and deception, or CCD measures. These measures reduce the effectiveness of the reconnaissance effort and their attacking force. This helps preserve our resources. The purpose of this program is to introduce the Air Force Camouflage, Concealment and Deception program. This program will cover an introduction to CCD, outline responsibilities, identify CCD measures, and discuss the application techniques that must be considered. Some people have a hard time relating to camouflage, concealment, and deception. In the simplest terms, CCD is like several of Mother Nature's phenomenons. An early morning fog is very similar to applying artificial smoke to hide your base from an attacking force. Various animals' fur changes with the season. These changes are necessary so they'll be harder to see and blend in with surrounding foliage. This helps ensure their survivability. Likewise, CCD helps the Air Force survive. The primary objective of the Air Force Camouflage, Concealment and Deception program is to reduce the effectiveness of attacking air and ground forces and their reconnaissance efforts. The objective also includes actions to deceive an attacker and integrates with the Tactical Deception Program. CCD measures are designed to support contingency plans by minimizing the loss of operational capability. Our highest priorities are force survivability and mission continuation. The principles of CCD apply to any contingency. CCD techniques can also maximize mission effectiveness in military operations other than war. Examples of these operations are low-intensity conflicts, peacekeeping efforts, and humanitarian missions. Relatively inexpensive techniques and equipment are used to increase the survivability of critical assets and thus reduce the cost for replacements. AFI 32-4007 implements and provides guidance on the Air Force Camouflage, Concealment, and Deception Program. The primary source for technical information is the Air Base Camouflage, Concealment, and Deception Guide. What are the methods used by enemies to acquire targets? Why is this important? Understanding their acquisition methods will help us improve the way we employ our countermeasures. The most common target acquisition methods are the human eye, video systems, infrared systems, and radar. The human eye is the most effective means of detecting, recognizing, and identifying targets. This detection method depends on many factors, including target size, target background contrast, meteorological conditions, and the time of day. Video systems can greatly improve the eye's ability to detect and recognize targets by extending its range through telescopic means. Forward-looking infrared systems are frequently used to detect targets that emit thermal energy. For this method to detect an object, the object must have a radiative temperature different from that of the background. Radar systems operate by emitting pulses of radio waves. When the pulse of energy arrives at an object, it's either absorbed, scattered, or reflected. The reflected energy returns to the receiver where it's translated onto the scope. To alter or obscure part or all of these acquisition methods, camouflage, concealment, and deception implements techniques to hide, blend, disguise, and decoy. Hiding means the complete concealment or screening of target areas from detection. Discovery of important targets is prevented by positioning a physical barrier to block the view. Techniques useful for hiding targets include vegetation, nets, and screens. The objective of blending is to make an object look like or appear to be part of the background. In the visual band, this normally means coordinating the colors and brightness of the target with the background. Disguises generate false appearance so that the target looks like some other non-target. For example, this large building has been made to appear like a parking lot with spaces painted on one end. 
Decoys are objects which are constructed specifically to look like real items of equipment or structures and operating surfaces. They are intended to draw the enemy attention from real targets. Decoys present the appearance of equipment or activity in areas where there is little or no equipment or activity. This brief introduction should have just opened the door on what CCD is about. Who's responsible for establishing and implementing the Camouflage Concealment and Deception Program? Each MAGCOM evaluates the threat and provides definitive guidance to each base. The scope of CCD integration into the installation defenses is based on location, threat, mission requirements, and organizational structures. Specific requirements and tasks will be included into the base and wing-wide measures. The installation or wing commanders will establish a single, comprehensive CCD program that supports all units. Their CCD program guidance will be inserted into applicable operations orders, plans, directives, and similar documents. CCD will be evaluated during assessments and readiness exercises. The base civil engineer, through the readiness flight, is responsible for the management of the installation CCD program. Readiness personnel brief and advise on CCD measures planned, programmed, and initiated to ensure contingency operations. They assist the Survival Recovery Center with CCD operations and coordinate with the Installation Exercise Evaluation Team Chief to ensure CCD capabilities are evaluated during readiness exercises. All units will provide functional support to the installation and wing CCD program. This support will include unit planning, training, execution, employment, and equipment maintenance and repair. Each unit will also identify requirements, budget, and maintain and employ unit CCD equipment. How in-depth each installation CCD program becomes is determined by their MAGCOM analysis of the situation. Your unit's involvement is adjusted accordingly. Our planning objectives call for all contingency planning documents to include the procedures for employing CCD. The specific procedures will normally be developed by each responsible functional agency. This ensures they will be fully integrated into their contingency work schedules. To assist in this development effort, the readiness flight conducts planning sessions to integrate CCD into overall base and deployment location defense plans. CCD planners will use these documents as their basis for developing CCD plans and employing CCD measures. Agencies like the security police, intelligence, and airfield management are normally members of an installation-wide planning group. They meet to develop, coordinate, and consolidate all plans. Successful implementation of any plan can only result if a comprehensive training program is provided. Civil engineer readiness personnel receive a variety of formal air education and training command courses at Fort McClellan, Alabama. Camouflage concealment and deception training is fundamental to Air Force readiness. Specialized qualification and certification courses are also taught on CCD procedures and equipment at the Silver Flag exercise sites. These courses are put to good use as CE readiness flight personnel are responsible for training designated unit personnel. An initial eight-hour planners course consists of a CCD program overview, basic principles and assumptions, threat sensors, and planning and implementation. A CCD trainer course is mandatory for unit trainers. Upon completion of this four-hour course, unit trainers are responsible for training their personnel. This course covers CCD program overview, basic principles and assumptions, and threat sensors. Upon returning to their organization, unit trainers are responsible for teaching a CCD users course. This course is designated to train personnel on how to inspect, employ, and maintain their specific CCD equipment. For this training to be effective, we must understand what equipment is available and how do we employ it. There are certain elements or characteristics every object or activity has which enables it to be seen or recognized. An observer identifies objects by its shadow, form, color, or surface texture. 
These identifiers are referred to as signatures. To help prevent detection and recognition, the signatures must be altered or concealed. Effective camouflage and concealment can be achieved in four ways. Sighting, construction, natural camouflage, and artificial camouflage. Sighting and construction must be considered in the initial planning and development stages of any new facility. Once these facilities have been completed, we can make significant contributions through the use of the following CCD measures. Camouflage nets or screens provide an expedient means of concealing important targets at a much lower cost than more permanent methods. This method is probably the most recognizable of any CCD measure. The most common types of nets are the woodland, desert, and snow. A couple of new nets recently added to the inventory are the lightweight and the ultra lightweight camouflage nets. Decoys are objects which are constructed specifically to look like the real item of equipment or structure. Decoys should be camouflaged in the same method or style but made to appear that their detection is accidental rather than intentional due to accidental defects in camouflaging. There are a number of decoys currently in the inventory. Some of these are manufactured, others have to be locally constructed. Let's take a look at a few different types. Inflatable devices are manufactured to appear as trucks, generators, aircraft, and other equipment. These devices are lightweight and easy to set up using forced air. Decoy type buildings and other facilities can also be constructed in locations removed from vital target areas. These deceptions can be constructed as expedient lightweight shells to save costs. The cost can be offset by the decoy building having a peacetime function. Tubular frame decoys consist of lightweight tubular metal frames which are erected and covered with fabric to resemble an aircraft or high value facility. They have an advantage of being easy to transport and quickly assembled. Damaged and unserviceable equipment, such as vehicles, construction equipment, actual aircraft, or parts of an aircraft, make excellent decoys when positioned properly. Smoke and obscurance should be considered in the concealment of the installation prior to and when under attack. It can be used to supplement camouflage by aiding in concealing either the installation or a landmark which can be used to locate specific targets. Studies indicate intense stress and disorientation can be placed upon the enemy resulting from the use of smoke. These same evaluations have been successful in concealing air base resources. The main purpose of tone down and blackout is to simply lower the contrast of our equipment, facilities and structures to more closely match their backgrounds. For tone down we use paints and stains which are generically referred to as coatings. Coatings are applied in uniform, disruptive, and geometric patterns. Tone down is not intended to prevent detection of a target. The goal is to delay target acquisition and cause the attacker to miss the window of opportunity to effectively launch weapons. Blackout is another fundamental part of any CCD program. In the simplest terms, leaving the lights on creates a well-lit target range. However, if your base is in the middle of a large city, blacking it out would cause it to be a darkened target. Turning off outside lights, driving without the use of normal vehicular lighting, and covering windows and other openings from letting the light be seen can easily be accomplished. Forestation and vegetation are permanent CCD measures, which contributes to the overall camouflage of the air base by blending it with the surrounding area. This measure is relatively inexpensive and effective for concealing critical targets. An added bonus of this measure is the high return for quality of life programs. Screening an object with trees and vegetation reduces the object's apparent size. This reduction makes detection and recognition more difficult. Vegetation is also used to accomplish large-scale patterning of open areas and to reduce shadows. The shade plants keep structures cooler and reduces thermal signatures. The previous CCD measures are pretty easy to understand and relate to. However, to counter our enemy's electronic detection devices, we must know what they'll be using and how it functions before we can apply appropriate countermeasures. The three most common electronic devices used are the infrared or IR systems, radar systems, and laser radars. IR systems normally have a field of view that requires no illumination. 
They can operate under day and night conditions and can usually see through some haze and conventional smoke. However, they cannot see through natural fog and clouds. Radar is used for both navigation and acquisition targeting functions. Generally, radar systems have a poorer resolution than thermal imagers. An advantage of radar is that it can be used to acquire targets in adverse weather and at long distances. Laser radar is one of the most effective and widely used all-weather surveillance and target area sensors. These radars produce images of almost photographic appearance. Laser-guided weapons such as artillery and mortar projectiles and aerial bombs are a serious threat to mission-critical facilities because of their precision delivery. Electronic countermeasures are one of our most challenging tasks. Fortunately, many of the countermeasures previously discussed have an application here also. For example, ultra-lightweight camouflage nets contain radar-absorbing and scattering properties. Vegetation causes less energy to return to enemies' radar receivers and more clutters seen on the screen. And smoke creates havoc to laser systems. In addition, very simple radar decoys can be made from a group of corner reflectors. These reflectors consist of three metallic faces forming 90-degree angles that creates clutter, fills the voids, and simulates the radar return of structures. The countermeasures just discussed can't be applied as standalone measures. They must be integrated into a comprehensive, well thought out combination of measures for your installation to succeed. When you implement your CCD measures, remember that the attacker will be able to see vertical and horizontal surfaces at a greater distance than other parts of your base. CCD applications are classified in two categories, permanent or expedient. Permanent applications involve measures with sufficient durability to withstand the rigors of time, weather, and operations. Most coatings, vegetation, and earthwork or construction techniques are examples of the permanent type of application. Expedient application refers to the CCD measures applied in alert or high threat situations. This technique must be capable of being applied rapidly. They don't have to be of high durability. Nets, mats, water, foam, smoke, and some coatings are examples of measures that can be applied rapidly. Generally, the use of decoys will be an expedient measure. Where is all this equipment going to come from? As previously mentioned, at a permanent installation or base, it is each individual unit's responsibility to procure, store, employ, and maintain their CCD equipment. What about deployments to bare base locations like we had during Desert Storm? The 49th Material Maintenance Group at Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico, currently stores and maintains two different types of CCD equipment packages. A CCD Desert Camo Net Package comes with nets and support systems. This package provides camouflage screening and shade for facilities supporting a base population of 1,100 personnel. The second package is a CCD contingency deployment kit. It consists of an enclosed trailer that is a decoy resembling an aircraft ground support air conditioner. Inside the trailer are camo nets, support systems, cans of camouflage paint and smoke pots. These deployment packages are constantly being updated with new equipment. The balloon decoys shown here are examples of this modernization process. As you've just heard, there are no set combination of measures, nor specific applications of these measures. Each installation threat situation must be thoroughly reviewed and appropriate actions planned. Camouflage, concealment, and deception is like the kid's game of hide-and-seek. In the kid's game, being found only eliminates you from play for a little while. Being found by an attacking force and having bombs rain down upon our bases leaves a lasting impression and may mean permanent elimination. This video was created to introduce the Air Force Camouflage, Concealment and Deception Program. It provided an introduction that clearly identified the principles of CCD and outlined the common methods of target acquisition. Civil Engineer Readiness Flight is one of the key players in the CCD program. Theirs and other organizations' responsibilities were outlined. 
Implementation of CCD requires a considerable number of tools and equipment. These measures were identified and a brief description of each was given. A discussion followed on the techniques for applying these measures. These techniques covered both permanent home station and deployed location application. While we'll never be able to completely hide from an enemy, there are a lot of things that we can do to confuse and deceive the enemy. Camouflage, concealment, and deception measures will help to ensure our survivability.